Welcome back to the Don and Gino Real Estate and Finance Show right here in your hometown station, AM 1220 KHDS. And remember, our goal is always to guide you to personal and financial wealth. Well, we sure are glad that you're back with the Don and Gino Real Estate and Finance Show every Saturday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. for over six years and over 1,500 YouTube videos. That's right. You can see it for yourself. Go to DonandGino.com. Click on the YouTube channel. You'll see over 1,500 YouTube videos. Great interviews with some of the top professionals we can find in all of Santa Cruz. And now we're reaching out nationally for you to kind of give you more insights from some of the top professionals around the nation and professionals that are helping us help you. Yeah, and so on our quest to guide you to personal and financial wellness, we found that by interviewing the top professionals across the nation, we can coach, help, and guide you to success. And ultimately, today is for you recovering landlords, uh, <laughs> those who either have or are still dealing with uh, property rental, and it is a difficult thing. It seems like when you buy a property, you do the math on paper, you're like, oh, I'm going to make X amount of dollars per month. It's going to be fantastic. And then in 25 years, it'll be paid off, and I'll be a millionaire. Yeah, sure. Uh huh. <laughs> and so we're really excited because we're sharing with you something new that Gino and I are working at. It's not every single week, but occasionally we're going to throw out a, what we call interview with the giants. We're interviewing some of the top professionals we mentioned to find out more about them and share it with you to hope inspire you. And that's our goal. And today we have a great guest, a lot of energy, a lot of passion, helping a lot of people, hundreds of people. Uh, thousands of people. She's a uh, speaker, author, businesswoman, Miss Linda, Liber Linda Liberatore. She doing her thing from seminars to helping others bring in that grade and investment, property, management, expert. If you want to know when she'll stop. <laughs> I'll get that right. Uh, and she's got a product that she's helped develop to help the everyday uh, real estate investor, help them organize, help them. Well, we're going to go into it because I, I want Linda to help us with this because this is your baby. You worked really hard to develop this. and So tell us more about the product and the service that you have helped create to help the everyday investor, Linda. Well, we're kind of a, um, I'll call it kind of a niche. So we have, as you, know, as you guys have both described, the do-it-yourself investor, and then you have people that move to full management. And one of the things Gino mentioned that I think is relevant is there comes a time that you feel you have the cash flow to give it to full management. Um, but other times you're struggling to kind of keep up. So what we have is a service that helps people keep organized and really just professionalize that relationship by getting involved and we help them collect the rent. We help them with maintenance calls. We help them with the legal documents. And when I say the legal documents, I mean like your, what did you refer to, your three-day notice, which of course differs in different parts of the country. But maybe it's a lease violation. And, you know, some of the things we discussed is it's always just best to professionalize that right away to be able to get into a business relationship and make sure that they get some help you know, I think too many times, as you said, they just assume that they'll get into the lease and and just go from there. But if they don't know that lease, there's some awful, uh, I'll call it, tenants that are quite uh, quite first on their leases. They know the lease is sometimes more than a new landlord. Yeah, what's interesting about leases is that we... Uh, sometimes forget that they're actual legal binding contracts and that those legal binding contracts have been developed by attorneys over all the years of watching lawsuits. So whether it's almost all real estate contracts have been developed that way is the result of a lawsuit ends up on a contract. And that's how you end up building these contracts. So when you're looking at mine is 23 pages. Uh, so my lease, yeah, my lease is 23 <laughs> pages. I get it from an attorney. I don't use the California Association of Realtors one. I personally don't like the California Association of Realtors one. Uh, it protects realtors, not landlords. Um, so I use this one in particular. Well, 23 pages is a lot, and I've modified it over the years. I've constantly been modifying, modifying, modifying to make sure that I ended up with a good product that protected me. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I really would... Um, second, what you said, I've seen them as long as we recently came across one that a new one coming out in Chicago by one of our landlords, 35 pages. Um, we have people in Georgia that are like 17 pages. You know, they differ, but yeah, and, and you know what? 
in all fairness, they protect both parties, right? They protect the landlord and they protect the tenant. So people have to realize that there's good clauses in there both ways, and you want to make sure that you are protecting you, you know, because like you said, some of the state or out-of-the-box ones might not specifically take advantage of all the laws that could protect you. So would you say that you're like a consulting service for landlords? <laughs> like, you know, because it, it really what we're talking about, you said you talk about the do-it-yourselfer and then full management. It really sounds like you assist the do-it-yourselfer that isn't ready for, for full management. It's like bridge management. Yeah, I would. That's a great description. I'd say bridge management, but I wouldn't say consultant. Um, I, I, what did you call it earlier? I think therapist. maybe therapist. <laughs> therapist might, I, I knew that was coming. Work. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we definitely do share best practices. So like just hearing about your lease and maybe you'll share a story, something that happened. I will, of course, share that with another landlord. Without the names, we're very, very sensitive to not sharing, you know, let's say privacy issues. But... I would definitely say, you know, this this could happen to you. We've seen this happen. You know, here's a silly one. Um, sometimes when it, and it's not silly, this <laughs> it involves a lot of money. Um, but if it's possible for you to put in language in your lease to guarantee showings when a tenant gives you notice they're leaving, if you don't have language in your lease that guarantees you'll be able to show that property with, obviously, with re whatever restrictions you both agree to, maybe a 24-hour notice, et cetera. I I've seen people just, they'll refuse that whole final 30 days. Will you stand to lose a month rent then if you have to wait till they're completely out to show it? Yeah. That, that's a lot of money. That's $1,000 right there. So I've seen people incentivize it or penalize it. They'll go either way, but either way, they've put in language to deal with it. The average standard lease doesn't have, like, I'll say some type of protection language. Right. Yeah, that's one of those interesting pieces, right? Because my personal uh, story with that is that I've never been very successful at leasing apartments while they're still leased because people don't have the imagination to imagine their own things in there. And let's be honest, some landlords, uh, some land, uh, some bleh, tenants I know. <laughs> are actually pretty sloppy and dirty and it's not really a showable apartment. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I mean, to have the language to protect you in case you know, it, it's nice to have it, but you're right. It, do, it doesn't necessarily work for everybody to show it early, but I've seen it where it goes the other way and, oh, I feel bad. You know, like the, the person just keeps saying, oh, no, sorry, busy, you know, and it's it's just unfortunate when that happens and they're not protected. Well, and, that, and I got to jump on the, you know, the part that we spoke of that's sensitive to me is because, you know, just becoming, you know, renting out my, uh, my previous home. I, or it's very personal to me and stuff. And I rented it out, and it's funny. I hired a, a management company to handle it, and it's funny. Um, I know the tenants that actually rented. I handled their their financing for their previous homes, and I was all excited. And I'm like, I know them, and then I should reach out. And my property manager just about tackled me and said, No, 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 no! Don't don't do that. I'm like, Why? I want them to know me. He goes, No, you don't. You don't because then all of a sudden it's Hey, Don, can you do this? Hey, Don, hey. And all of a sudden it becomes personal, as Gino mentioned. And when things break or happen or whatever, they're reaching out to you personally. Okay, so true story, piggybacking on that. I had one of my tenants who became a friend through the process, uh, ended up coming over to my house, working out together at Afterburn, all these things. And guess who decided to fall two to three months behind on their rent? Lo and behold, of course, that one. And I couldn't get him out of the loop. Always one, two, three months behind. So one of my motivating wow. factors was to get the management company to fix that situation. And guess who's never been late on their rent again? Never <laughs> once since I had the yeah. management company. So, yes, do not get too close. So before we, oh. we go to break, I'd love you. What is your product and how can somebody reach out to you if they have questions on this or, or need assistance with organizing and maintaining their properties because I know you can do it and we'll we're going to go into that but I know you can do it for somebody who has one property or if they have multiple properties you can actually layer that and help both out yes we do so we have a secure pay one or they can that's a one spelled out or they can go to mylandlordhelper.com either one uh, many times they you know they can just send me an email 
and I would be glad to help them over the phone to see if they have a scenario where we can help, you know. And then in that case, we're using any of the softwares that they choose. So we were starting to talk about software. You know, nowadays there's a Buildium, Rent Manager, Atfolio. So if they're small and they don't have a software, we can plug them right into our software. If they're larger and they already do have a software and they thought that was going to be the magic solution <laughs> and didn't realize they were going to have to work it, they were going to have to drive that, um, we can help them drive it. You know, we'll do that for them. Ah, very cool. Again, if you just tune in, we're here with Linda Liberatory, and uh, she's our guest on Interview with the Giants. And Linda, we've got to go to a break, but I'm excited because the next thing we have to go talk about the two, not just one, but two books that you uh, authored, and they're great books. And again, helping out the everyday investor, good stuff. So don't go away. We'll be right back with Linda Liberatory. <laughs> 